let's create an ogive in Excel. An ogive is also a cumulative frequency polygon. I like that language so much better because we're going to be plotting cumulative frequencies against our upper class boundaries. Now I've got my upper class boundaries here and I've copied them over from my grouped frequency distribution. Now you notice that I've got an empty row there at the very top of those upper class boundaries and that's because we need a starting place for this graph. That starting place is going to be where my data has a frequency or a cumulative frequency of zero and that's going to be at my lowest class boundary of 52.5. So I'm going to type in my lowest lowest class boundary here of 52.5. That for my group frequency distribution is just 0.5 outside of my data. So it's got a frequency of zero. That cumulative frequency is my running total. So we read this as up to, these are college credits, college credits of 52.5. I've got zero students. Up to 114.5 college credits, I've got five students. I'm adding 14 more to that, up to 176.5. I have a total of 19 and so on. I'm going to plot this using Excel's scatter plot. Let's go ahead and highlight by clicking, holding, and dragging through our data. And then I'm going to click on insert. You can either choose the scatter plot option here with the connected lines, or you can go to recommended charts. Now I don't want the bar chart, but as I scroll through my recommended charts, I see that it has recommended the one that I want. I click on that one and that's that scatter plot. Let's go ahead and click on OK. Moving this over, I can see that I have a decent looking ogive or cumulative frequency polygon, but I want those labels on the horizontal axis to be my class boundaries instead. So let's change that. I'm going to double click on those labels just anywhere along the axis labels and it brings up my options. So my bounds, I'm going to change that minimum to that lowest class boundary, which was 52.5 and you can leave the maximum there. What I really want to do is to change the units. So right now my major units go in 50s, but I want them to go every 62, which is my class width. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 62 here. And now you'll notice that my labeling along that horizontal axis matches the class boundaries in my chart. Now there's a few other things that I want to add. So I'm going to close this dialog box. I've already clicked on my graph, so I'm looking at that plus sign. You might need to click on your graph again. So if I just click on it once, I end up with this plus sign and I can add different elements. I definitely want some axis titles here. So now I've got an axis title for both of them. Let's change that horizontal axis to read college credits and my vertical axis should read cumulative frequency. Two more things I can do from here. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to click that plus button again. I am going to add data labels. So I've got that cumulative frequency, that running total labeled on each of my data points. And I'm going to change the title of this chart. I'm double clicking to get into that text box to ogive. So we've got a really great looking graph now. If I close out my dialog box, I can click, hold, and drag this around. I can also resize it. I hope this was helpful. Take a look at my next video to learn more about stats and Excel. Thanks for watching.